Hello there friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another video here on my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be playing with some Pear Blossom Press stuff along with these items from Trinity Stamps. We're going to be making a jellyfish card and we have this matching jellyfish wish stamp and stencil. Uh, and then we're going to be using the Twinkle Lights from Pear Blossom Press. And if you haven't used those before, I'm telling you right now, you're going to want to get your order in for those because you can start working on your Christmas in July type stuff, if you know what I'm saying. Um, we're not making a Christmas card today. There are lots of uses for these Twinkle Lights, but definitely I always think of Christmas when I think of these. Okay, so I've got this background. This is the uh, Wavy Lines background. And it's a clear stamp and then I have a five by seven piece of white cardstock I'm just gonna take my stamp I didn't take off the backing of it I just took off the the paper on the front and I'm inking that up with some Simon Hurley create breakup blue I don't need it to be absolutely perfect that's why I didn't like ink it up perfectly uh, this is the first time I'm using this stamp and that's part probably part of it I didn't condition the stamp at all um, next time I use it, it'll definitely be easier to use, but I find I don't have any problem stamping these out. Uh, sometimes I'll bring my paper to my stamp, or in this case, I brought the stamp to the paper, and I like that it's clear and you can see how it's going. And then even with this stamp being a 6x6 stamp, it was easy to use on this 5x7 piece of cardstock because that kind of a stamp is a little bit more of a continuous stamp. So we have our background. I used a blending buddy and blended some of that ink on the background. Then I got to thinking I should probably trim some of that off. So I'm going to trim off about um, maybe an, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off of each, all four of those sides. I just want a slight border when I put that on my 5x7 card base. Now I'm going to take that Jellyfish Wish, the main image from there, along with one of the sentiments that says, Make a Wish Jellyfish. And I'm going to ink that up using some blackout ink. Just about any black ink would work for this, or even um, a dark gray would work as well. I'm going to stamp that out a couple of times. I want to do some blending over the top of that with that stencil that uh, you can get. And so I just want to make sure I had a nice crisp black image. I'm going to move up my um, base or my panel. And then you'll notice that I did use that uh, clear acetate piece that covers the stamp just so that I could move my stamp around without having to clean it. Yes, I know that's a little bit lazy or is it innovative? You tell me, right? <laughs> but that keeps me from having to clean up my stamp in between. Um, and then I'll ink that up some more. I wanted three of those jellyfish on there because there are three of those twinkle lights. And so we've got our three jellyfish and now we're going to bring in the stencil. It is just one piece but you can uh, ink up all these different parts of this jellyfish. You could also color it, of course, with whatever medium you want to color it with, but I thought this was kind of fun because the jellyfish is a little bit see-through. So I'm just lightly blending on some of that breakup blue. Then I'm going to bring in this shooting star and blend that on this piece. Now I go a little bit too far on one of these. That's on that the third one I do. You'll see it when I get there. Um, and I even debated for a second. I usually do not like to start over when I am making a card. Once I've put some stuff down, I like to work with what I have. And I'm looking at that yellow splotch thinking, doggone it, Cassie, you knew better. This was just laziness. I didn't mask off any of that stencil like I probably should have. But you know what? Again, we're just going to work with this. We are going to do our best to cover it or whatever. I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. Uh, but we're going to keep working with what we have. So I am going to keep blending. This is Remember Me, and I'm kind of going a little bit light over this one as well. Uh, but I like that translucent look that we get by layering up these colors. And it also changes the color underneath. So when you blend some of those colors over the top of each other, you can get a different color. That's fun. Uh, and then we've got one more part to blend. This I'm using some Crown Me, but that final one, we're going to use this prom queen get that nice bright pink in there i like this color combo for some reason all of these colors and um then once we're done with that our jellyfish are all colored up and we're ready to move on to doing some assembly so check it out i love that uh, i shouldn't say assembly yet i did decide to bring in this next color which is the no diving it's a darker blue and I'm trying to blend that up, make it look like it's darker at the bottom, like these jellyfish are coming up from the deep. 
and hoping that might cover up some of that yellow a little bit. It didn't, and that's okay. We're going to use embellishments and splatter and all the things, and it's just not going to stand out that much. Like I said, I don't really like to start over. I like to work with what I have. I feel like in that process of messing up and trying to cover or trying to work with, you learn. And so that's my encouragement to you. You don't always have to start over. I am... I used to be sort of a perfectionist when it came to card making, but I've gotten so relaxed on that because this is a handmade card, as I always say. It does not have to be perfect. Uh, and chances are you're giving this to someone who totally respects and, and appreciates the fact that it's homemade. All right, so what you saw was me poking some holes in our jellyfish, and those holes are going to be for our twinkle lights. I just pulled out the little piece that keeps the battery from being connected. Hang on to that so that you can put that back in there if you need to for mailing this baby out. Uh, but I'm going to use some washi tape. This is just what I typically do when I'm putting these down. And I don't worry about like how that, how those uh, wires are going to look back there. I'll just take my light and I want to make sure it's facing forward. And then I will put it into the little hole I poked and I'll use a little bit of washi tape to hold that right in place so that our light doesn't move. And I'll do that with all three. And then the next piece I need to make sure is that everything still works, which it does. And then I kind of think about where I'm going to put my mechanism and I will use some double-sided adhesive. In this case, we're using some rip and stick. This is from Trinity Stance. It's pretty new. And so I'm just going to take, a, it's a quarter inch, and I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the back of our mechanism, our battery pack. Peel off that release paper. And then I, when I'm putting my battery pack down, I want to make sure that that battery is accessible. So just in case the recipient would like to change out that battery or needs to at some point. Uh, and also so that I can put the little release paper back in there to make sure that battery isn't connected when it goes through the mail. Then you have access to it. But check it out. The what makes those twinkle lights so cool is that the longer that you hold it, then they really start to get off like cycle, if that makes sense. So you hold it and they're on cycle at first and then... After a second or two, they're not on cycle anymore. So they're twinkling, which is so wonderful. I can imagine using these on some Christmas trees or stars in the sky or just all kinds of things. Okay, so now what I'm doing is using some double-sided foam adhesive. This is basically double thickness of whatever regular foam tape you might use. This is perfect for shakers. It's also perfect for um, lights like this because you want to make sure that you are keeping everything protected. But Amanda has some brand new stuff in there. I don't have it, but I have used it and I'm telling you, you're going to want it. Um, so I'll have that linked down below and then you can go grab that. I did peel off all the release paper and we're going to stick it down on top. And then I'm going to pull in this stamp set. It's an interactive uh, type stamp set that it's called Paper Crafting Magic. And then you just ink that up and I'm going to put the word push where my press button is or my push button is. And then that way the recipient knows to press that button there. But again, I don't want to stop there. I'm going to use these flat back sequins. These are the gold sparkle spots. So they are flat as can be, and they're going to make this mailer, it's not going to add any more bulk. But I wanted to make sure that I put some of those down over my little yellow mark. It takes away from some of that. Um, you know, I did all the splatter, I did all the other stuff, and that's going to finish off our card for today. So I'm going to hold that push button so you get how that works, and eventually those are going to be off, and they're going to just kind of sparkle and um, twinkle as they have a mind of their own there. <laughs> how fun is that? I cannot wait to send this one in the mail. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.